There's a cool scene from the uh, Hong Kong or Shanghai, I'm not even sure. Hi, this is Alan Hutchinson. I'm with htmarket.com. I am showing the Stuart film screen wall switch for the Visionary Electric. It has up, down, and stop. Pretty easy control mechanism. I also have with this screen a remote control, RF remote control I'm going to show you. you the remote control for the Stuart Visionary Electric. The Visionary Electric case as it goes up into the ceiling here there's a soffit and I'm gonna hit the remote control and lower it and you can see how it comes down very smoothly and quietly hit the stop button then you can raise it up this is a Somfy motor I'm going to show you the visionary electric uh, as it comes down from the recessed ceiling as you can see there's a, a wall here that has a crooked indentation so you could not put a fixed screen on this wall if it were a flat wall we probably would have put a fixed screen into this room and what I'm going to do is just show you with a remote control how this comes out of the case. Here it comes straight down. It comes down nice and slowly and quietly. And it uh, really looks great once it's get down. I'm going to do some measurements, quick measurements on it. Now Stuart can customize any screen to order. Uh, this uh, screen was done in a 105 diagonal measurement, but I'm going to do the masking measurements which are pretty much the standard measurements. You're looking at on the top, six inches on top, and about three and three, three and almost four inches on the sides, depending on where you measure. If you measure on the bottom, it's a little bit bigger. It's about five inches. And then on the bottom measurement, you're looking at a little under four inches masking. And then the width measurement of the actual screen uh, would be around uh, 90 inches. Now, as I said, it was 105, so I'm going to stretch this thing out to 105 diagonal, and it should be fairly, fairly close if I can keep it steady. And you're looking at 105, pretty much 105 exactly. And the height is basically 51 and a half inches. So you got a 105 diagonal screen by 90 wide, pretty much. I'm showing the projector we're going to use on the screen to demo the screen. This is an InFocus uh, 777 3 chip DLP. Now, this is HD, but it is 720p. But at the time, this is about a 2007 or 2006 purchase. It's a three chip DLP. It retailed for around $15,000. And it still puts out a beautiful picture because it has the three chip DLP system, no color wheel, and is extremely bright. So it'd be a good uh, projector to demo this on. Projectors nowadays, that if you want to get a three chip DLP, you're going to have to basically get a digital projection system or a Christie or a Runco. Those are the few companies that make them and now they're making them in 1080 and 3D but the three chip DLP is three Texas Instruments DLP chips in one projector is like buying almost three projectors in one. Uh, if you're just buying, if you're buying a low cost DLP for instance for $9.99 that has a color wheel but if you're buying something like this to do the convergence and the video processing on three chips is a very complicated process. And so you're not, you don't see a lot of those on the market under $10,000. I know the, the uh, digital projection ones are in the $50,000 range. So even at 720p, this was a bargain three chip DLP. I'm going to turn on some movies and show you the 
the screen. I'm showing an older movie in DVD. It's not HD or, or Blu-ray. Uh, it's a uh, called The Nutty Professor with Jerry Lewis. And uh, it shows a great picture. I've got it on the lights on. You can see how bright the projector is. I'm going to flip the lights off quickly so you can see the, the image. It's a pretty, pretty good image for uh, just a regular DVD. Uh, I have a collection of myself that's about over a couple hundred DVDs, and a lot of them aren't Blu-ray. And the older ones uh, are not in HD, but they still come out great. Now you're going to see a little of that scatter on the side, but colors are really good. So I'm going to basically show you uh, some Comcast signals, and I'm going to show you uh, a blue, couple Blu-rays. Shot I'm showing you uh, Showtime HD. This is the Million Dollar Baby movie, and you can see like the, the pictures of very bright and very well defined. Uh, shadow detail is good through the dark scenes. You can see basically shadows right in his clothes. That's what you're going to look for in a screen to give you depth in the uh, image. And it's a very good picture. I have the projector set up about it. my uh, movie. Not my projector's about 12 feet away, but the camera I have set up about 15 feet away or 16 feet away. So it gives you an idea of the image. I'm going to show you some uh, television, like Golf Channel HD, in a minute. Right now. Right now I have the golf channel on. I'm gonna uh, basically zoom out so you can see the room and then zoom into the picture itself. And you'll see that the picture is fabulous. Uh, this is the golf channel in HD and it's very bright running the uh, NBC, actually it's the NBC uh, feed from the golf channel. And you can see the colors are awesome. You can see ripples in the water. So it's an awesome uh, screen. Showing the dark night on a zoom out from about 15 feet on our camera, which is a nice Panasonic HD camera. I'm going to zoom in on the dark night. And then I'm going to flip to a couple different scenes in the movie. The interesting thing is The Dark Knight is filmed in two different formats. And I think it might have been for IMAX. Uh, Sometimes it's in 2, 3, 5 to 1 where you're going to have a border on top and bottom here. And on the bottom here. And then when we flip to the next scene you'll see that the uh, it fills the screen to the scene. So it's now it's in 16.9. And I remember at the IMAX they showed both. Now it's back to 2351. This is a bright scene. You can see the real brightness in this scene. Color saturation of the screen. And uh, really is uh, the blue. You can tell from Nutty Professor to do the Golf Channel's Blu-ray. Blu-ray transfers are really good. Another bright scene. This is a cool scene with the uh, Hong Kong or Shanghai. I'm not even sure. I think it's Hong Kong. Welcome to Hong Kong, Mr. Fox. Yeah, Hong Kong. This one fills the uh, screen also. So they're using both formats in this. So if you're thinking about doing two, three, five to one or 16.9. I still think for most situations the 16.9 is the way to go uh, format because you're the most versatile. You can keep the same width also. Now we're back at 2.3.5.1. Uh, we're showing this uh, pause shot on a ST-130 Stewart uh, Visionary Electric. I have a sample of the Firehawk here. And a lot of people, Firehawk gets a lot of play for contrast enhancement. And one of the things I always tell people when you do Firehawk, you're actually going to fade some of the whiter scenes. And I'm going to show you an example of that, basically. When you look at this collar of the shirt, this is Firehawk right next to ST-130. And you can see you're going to lose significant de detail of a lighter shot and even of the, of the skin color. 
Now I'm going to do this with the light. This is with the lights on right now. So I'm going to do it with the lights off also. Okay, I'm showing this again. Firehawk and this ST130 with the lights off. So you're seeing how it darkens the screen underneath it. I mean, as you go around, the detail of Firehawk versus ST130 is pretty, you can see it so obviously. That's why I prefer to suggest ST130 with today's projectors, contrast is not really a problem. So in my humble opinion, I would go with ST130 over Firehawk G3 in most situations. Here's Ultramat 150. Now this is even going to look a little brighter than ST130. And we've been recommending Ultramat 150. If you're pretty much dead on the screen, like most home theaters, you don't get a lot of hot spotting when you only have a 100 inches wide screen and a 100 inch wide row of seats. So this even shows a little bit of a, I'm going to keep it still on his mouth, and you can see it slightly brightens the screen. And this is good for 3D viewing. 3D has a tendency to turn the lights down on your projector. The collar again, and you can see it slightly picks up the, the light output on 150. Uh, it's only a 1.5 game versus 1.3, so it's not really that obvious, but it slightly picks it up. Let me go over here. You can just see the details. Here's the edge, viewing side, and you can see the corner of the detail there. Uh, it really shows it when you use the Firehawk, how different it is. And uh, that kind of gets the point across on different gains on uh, what it can do for your home theater. See, it says Ultramat 150 in the corner. This is a sample by Stuart. It's fairly thick and heavy, heavy duty. I mean, I've got a, it's got some weight to it. As a recap, uh, Stuart uh, Film Screen offers many different screen materials or fabrics, uh, whatever you want to call them. They're basically a, they're basically optical coating, usually using a vinyl type surface. Uh, the one we recommend the most is G3, uh, Studio Tech 130 G3. Now, 130 refers to the gain, which is 1.3, and this screen is in 1.3 gain with overhead lights right over the screen. You can see it has some really good brightness. The other screen that uh, we recommend uh, sometimes would be the Firehawk G3. And that's where situations where people are having a lot of scattered light problems and they're getting reflection off the screen. Uh, I still think Firehawk G3 was made for improving contrast on projectors versus dealing with light. So, I tend to have a tendency to not recommend Firehawk G3 for most situations. And uh, we do have a demo on our website also on Firehawk G3. It still shows a bright, bright uh, image, but when you look at it in comparison, like I showed, the uh, ST130 definitely outshines the brightness. And the uh, last uh, fabric we recommend for people that like to view a lot of 3D or bright want 50 percent brightness the ultramat 150 is 50 percent brighter than a 1.0 gain screen and it's a heavy duty material and it does give you a little bit of a punch off of the st130 but you will lose some angle of view as you go up to a 1.5 gain screen so i wouldn't recommend it for a really wide theater but maybe some a more of a narrow theater where you're only having three or four rows of seats wide on your theater, and maybe a smaller screen. Uh, 105 is not the biggest screen, but it's, it's a nice size screen, and we're seeing a lot more orders uh, in the 130 actually area, 130 diagonal. Uh, the, last but not least, we can take any type of screen at Stewart with Stewart and make any size you want, whether you want 10 inches of black masking, or five inches of black masking, or a bigger screen. So we can custom order any screen. And the Visionary Electric allows you, to, if you're doing a rough-in construction, we can ship the Visionary Electric case within a few days of the order. So you're not waiting, your contractors aren't waiting around. And then we can ship the screen housing, the screen itself later. A friend of mine did that uh, two years ago. He ordered the housing and he just got around to ordering the actual screen this year. 
because his construction was delayed. So we can do that and that's not a problem. So I do recommend Stewart over a lot of the other companies. It's more expensive, but if you're going to be putting in a recessed screen and it's a fixture in a very nice luxury home, it's the way to go because it will improve the value of your home and it will not break down under most circumstances. I haven't seen any of them break, to be honest with you. In the time we've been selling Stewart for 13 years and I haven't had any returns on electronics breaking or any of that. So we recommend it at htmarket.com and I'll bid you do. Stewart is the company and you can buy it at htmarket.com. Thank you.